Hey everybody, Tom here with Hidden Beats today, and we are talking with the lovely Justine Blanchett. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How about you? Pretty good. It's uh, it's early in the morning for me still, so I, I don't usually do the interviews. I do them in the afternoon mostly, so I can mentally prepare myself more. So that's fair. That's fair. It is it is nine a.m. in my time zone. So <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm usually working late, so it, the the yeah. mornings are not always my friend, but it works out <laughs> nicely, anyways. That'll do it. Yep. <laughs> so uh, we've talked before in the past in a written interview, but for those who are new to you and your music, can you give maybe a little bit of an introduction to yourself about yourself? Sure. Um, I was born in a musical family, I guess you could say. Um, I have three other siblings and I'm the second born. Um, I've been doing music pretty much my entire life. Um, I was homeschooled for all of the studies except for university and all that. And so part of our curriculum was music as well. And so um, I did stuff like piano, guitar, saxophone, a couple of things. I flute at some point, I'm sure. <laughs> Um, and so music's just always been part of my daily life. And, uh, when I was about 11, I, um, my appendix burst and I was in the hospital for about three weeks and that took, um, a toll on, I'd have to say in a, like an 11 year old brain, just thinking I almost died. And so, um, it was one of those things where it burst and I went into sepsis and all those things. And it was, it was pretty scary. And I, I don't think I knew the extent of everything that was going on at, at, at the time, but I remember thinking that I wanted to do more than just live life and do school and things like that. And so at that time I decided to try singing. Um, my mom was a choir director and so she, she sings really well and she's been um, always an inspiration for me. And so um, I remember turning to her and being like, I think I want to try singing and just give it a shot and try, see what happens. And so I started out with opera, <laughs> very okay. different from country. I will say technique wise, it is similar, um, but it was genre wise. It's very, very different. And so I did that for about, oh gosh, I want to say about two and a half years, tried learning Italian and messed up my Spanish, a couple of things. And just I don't have any Italian roots. And I was like, this, this doesn't feel right. And so I was like, I don't want to keep doing opera forever. And so at the time when I was 15, my singing teacher asked me um, what I wanted to do. What was my favorite genre? And I told her country. Country music has always been my favorite genre. And because I was homeschooled, my parents took me and my siblings on lots of trips um and um lots of trips especially um in the United States and country radio is very common in the United States and so um I was introduced to country very very early on and it just stuck with me and so I just decided to switch over to country music and give that a shot because I've always always loved it and um so at 15 I wrote my first song and first song with lyrics and um it's just been a journey since, since then. So at this point I'm eight singles in, um, actually no 10 singles now. <laughs> and, and there's a debut EP coming out next month and it's just, it's, it's a wild ride. Mm -hmm. Do you remember like the, a song or an album that you heard that was like, wow, that's, this is the reason I'm going into country. Oh goodness. Um, I don't think so. I think it's very much kind of like a culmination of a lot of things that just so many songs so many and I, I think I think the main thing that made me want to go for country music is the lyrics and how down to earth it is and that's so close to my personality how I present myself and I can't stand <laughs> to present myself as anything but myself mm -hmm. and so that's what country music looks like to me oh, and okay. it's it's storytelling. And that's what I wanted to do. Share my story, share other people's stories um, and get to do that through songwriting. So that's, that's what it is really. Yeah. Country music definitely is all about stories. That's for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I was first introduced to your music with hard to love and that's kind of what we were, we talked about previously. And then since then you have heartless, I believe that came out and, and now we're looking at the EP, which is the, I can't remember. I think it was, it was, six or seven tracks on that or like something like that there's five tracks five tracks five tra yeah. okay yeah I, I had a list of it somewhere anyways yeah. um what's what's it like actually coming together and releasing a full a full ep now 
it's pretty crazy. And it's because it's a debut. I'm like, what, what do we do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the last two singles, Heart to Love and Heartless are going on the EP. So what's been cool about this entire release cycle is that because I've, I've been able to hint at what the EP is going to look like with the last two singles. And so um, the EP is very much the realities of the dating world and how it is. And um, I think the songs are very relatable and it's mostly the reason why I picked the songs on there um I didn't write any of the songs on there but there's so many amazing songwriter songwriters on those songs and so it's it's truly an honor to be able to have those songs and give them life and show them to the world really did, did you have like issues trying to put your own feelings into it or like balance trying to someone else wrote it but you're trying to make it your own and 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 give it some life to how how was that work out for you uh I can't say that recording when I tend to be very technical when it comes to to singing and so in the booth <laughs> what my producer says very often is like just sing it like just sing it like go with your feelings and I'm like what feelings? <laughs> it's, it's difficult to take especially because some of those songs are, are challenging vocally. And so I'm focusing on, on trying to hit the notes, trying to hit the right, um, with the right approach, I guess, technical when singing. And so, um, comments that I've had, especially from my best friend and my mom are just like, you don't look like you, it doesn't sound like you're feeling the song. And I'm like, I'm trying, <laughs> I'm really, really trying. And so, um, the lyrics do speak to me, uh, because I've been through some of those situations. And so, um, it's not that I don't feel them. It's that sometimes singing, um, I kind of have to take away the technical part of it where I'm like, you know how to sing, just sing it. Mm -hmm. And so try to feel it now. And so I've, I've done my best to try and do that through the songs. Well, I mean, I listened to a few of them and it definitely, I, I can feel you in the song. Like I, I listened to how you sound as a musician and you can, I, mm -hmm. I feel you in it. So it seems like it worked right. out pretty well. <laughs> <That's amazing>. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> What was there? Do you have like a favorite track? I know, I know everyone doesn't want to always put favorites out there, you know, their favorite mm -hmm. child or anything like that. But was there yeah. one of these that was, that was your favorite to, to put? Oh together? gosh. I feel like it, it changes throughout. It, it's kind of like the next one coming out is my favorite, but the last one also was, you know, it's kind of like, and also because I've heard the song so many times at this point that I'm just like, I don't, I really don't know. Mm -hmm. um, Heartless, I have to say, which is the last release, um, was really one of my favorites um, of them all, just because I was like, it's so different. It's a, it's, you know, it has a, an extra little flavor in it that we don't really hear on the country music market as much. Um, but now at this point, I've, I've, um, I've, I've filmed the music video for the next song and I'm just like, this is the best song ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's what I mean. It kind of changes along um, uh, as it goes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, I think at this point, I can't say that the next song um, that will sort of be the, uh, what do you call it? Like the feature track on that EP is, I'd have to say is one of my favorites really. <laughs> okay. I'm 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 looking forward to to all the releases as they come out for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. It's gonna be exciting. Now, when we talked previously, or I guess it was written, but you, you talked about you know be back and forth between Nashville and Montreal. Has that been difficult balancing trying to figure out your path in Nashville and then your path in Montreal? Uh yeah, it's definitely been. It's not, it's not been easy. Uh, a lot of it because I feel I don't feel tethered to either mm -hmm. and so it, a lot of it is you know the personal journey of just where am I <laughs> you know where where do I go uh why am I in Nashville why why do I go back to Montreal and whenever I leave here I'm sad crying driving back and I'm like uh it doesn't like it the previous times when I've driven back to Montreal hasn't I haven't been crying like that before so why <laughs> mm. why am I crying now and so um um, I, I don't want to say that I'm, I don't cry either. I'm, I'm generally, I don't, I'm not a huge emotional person, but, <laughs> but it's been, it's been a lot lately just trying to figure out. Um, but I've made steps to, to feel at home here and uh, it's really finding, finding people here really has made it home more than back home. I, 
I'd have to say it's, I have family in Montreal. My, my close family is there. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's about it. And so I think the personal journey of, of making it make sense and being like, I feel at home in Nashville. And so, um, making that move is scary, but it's something that, that will be happening in the near future. And so it's all, it's all exciting. It's all very scary. (laughs) Well, I mean, Nashville is, is the, the country hub. Like that's, that's where you go for, for country music. It makes Mm -hmm. sense to, to kind of migrate there at some point for sure. Exactly. And I think, I think I, I don't want to say I should have migrated earlier, but I think I'm at a point where it makes sense to do that. And so this is where I'm at. (laughs) I mean, it'll work for you for sure. You're already doing Mm -hmm. pretty well. So yeah. Well, thank you. Now we talked again last time a bit about the music scene and, and the diff and the differences between, but what do you, what do you see as the, the highs and lows of coming out of COVID and, you know, festival season and, and the concert seasons in full swing. What do you see the highs and lows coming in this year? Um, oh my goodness. Um, I'd have to say, I'll start with the lows. Um, the lows can be that because things stopped during COVID, especially back in Quebec where, um, for full two years, like two summers, things kind of were weird. And so additions and programming has shifted and so it's difficult to get in there and just be like I'm, I'm still here like I want I want to perform is are there any spots mm-hmm. um so that's been very difficult to get anything really um and it's just it's always trying to be you know three steps ahead of everything and that's that's the difficult part that's been um that's been weighing a lot um I think the highs though of COVID is because we've gone so much online um, it's easy to, to say, um, well, I'm not playing here, but I will be doing more online events and that's become the norm. And so it's easier to just be like, oh, because in person has been harder to get, then I can just turn to online. Mm -hmm. So I, the highs is definitely online. (laughs) It's been great. Yeah. There's, there was a a huge shift actually. Yeah my my interviews like the these virtual interviews actually started during covid and yeah mm-hmm. and it was something like i'm a photographer i'm usually out covering a concert and then yeah. turn into doing these and and now i'm i think i'm i'm working about 200 interviews a year at this point so there's, yeah, there's there lots of online content to absorb now mm-hmm. for sure exactly and especially being so much in between nashville and montreal if i'm not sure where I'm going to be and wanting to plan in-person events or or shows or whatever. Um, it's the, the times that I go home and the times that I come back here, cause I'm currently in Nashville, it's, um, it's kind of like everything is a little bit up in the air. So if, if I have stuff online, it's easier for me to just be like, okay, sit down, do the event rather than be like, oh no, I have to be there at that time. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that, that's what I mean. The online events have been easier to manage than in-person things for sure and and i'm actually based in ottawa myself and we probably went through some similar things as montreal Mm -hmm. and and it was really weird for the music scene around here like we lost a lot of venues here in ottawa and that's the tough part unsure about what things were doing so Mm -hmm. yeah definitely so what do you think it takes to to stand out now there's in the digital age everybody's releasing music all the time. There's an oversaturation. Mm-hmm. What do you think it takes to be a step above someone else? Uh, I think mainly, I mean, there could be a million reasons, um, but I think mainly consistency. If you stick around long enough, then people notice you. If you, if you post enough, if you, um, if you're just there really and offer Sim- simplicity because I think we're coming out of a time where we're tired of overproduced over um what's the word for it over oh gosh over edited really mm-hmm. that's what it is where it's kind of like social media we know how faked things can be on social media and so I think coming at, at an angle of authenticity that's what makes it That's when people connect. They don't connect with an Instagram handle. They connect with a person. And that's what I think that's the most important. And and I've experienced a lot of that. So I also do um, like song reviews, things like that. And you can you can tell when someone's being authentic in a song versus just 
producing a piece and throwing it out there and waiting for the next mm-hmm. one to come out. It's it's weird to see because I'm kind of in that age range where I had the old school music scene where you're selling CDs and things like that. And now yeah. everything's just digital, digital, digital all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're kind of coming back into that, which is kind of funny because CDs aren't selling as much, but things like vinyls now, I'm mm-hmm. just like, those are so expensive to make. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. where do I draw the line of, of it's an investment versus I'm wasting my money on this. And that's, that's so hard as an independent artist. Yeah, I would imagine so. Vinyls, yeah, they are. That's an interesting one coming back too because Mm -hmm. there's all of a sudden this influx of of new equipment coming out, but then it's like it still costs money to make all these things and and putting it out there. Yeah, a lot of money. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Is is there stuff you do to to keep yourself grounded? There's a lot of, you know, movement and everything in the music world. Do you keep yourself grounded outside of that and try to center yourself regularly? Uh, definitely. I think um, having a, a social circle that doesn't involve people in the music industry kind of kind of keeps me. I'm I'm able to have perspective from outside the country music industry, even though I love it. It's amazing. I think the people in it are are great people. I think it's closer to my identity to be able to make that just to to detach a little bit and not always because if I I don't know like I, I feel like if it's if you're in the country music industry, you tend to want to so fiercely be in competition with all the artists around you that it makes, depending on the personnel, and I'm not saying that's everybody, but um, it kind of makes you want to work so hard that you lose parts of yourself in that, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And so keeping keeping some kind of anchor outside of it and remembering that yes, you might be in competition with people around you, but it's also a community. And yeah. so I think remembering that it's, everybody's just doing their best and that's what it is. And and again, reality is a social media might, m- might make you think that someone's, oh my goodness, they're doing so great, but they, they might be struggling, struggling really badly to keep up with that success. And so mm-hmm. that's really, really important. It's that that perspective is going to keep you grounded for sure. I think it's it's not even necessarily all well, the way I look at it, it's not necessarily that you want to be in competition with the music mm-hmm. have to be because okay, there's yeah. so much out there. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, speaking of the community, then is there any artists out there that you think people should be watching a little bit more? Kind of give a shout out to some of them. Oh, absolutely. I've I've been surrounded by some amazing people around here. Um. Oh my goodness. There's, there's so many. Um, I'd have to say Leanne Pearson. Um, she is originally, I believe, I don't want to say something wrong, but I believe from, um, from Manitoba. And so she has been an incredible resource and friend for me. And, um, she has some great stuff, some great music out right now. And, um, yeah, just, I think, I think that's the main one. She's been, she's been incredible really. As oh, a that's friend awesome. Here. I always like to 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 get more more of who people are listening to because there's so many thing artists and music and songs out there. Mm-hmm. It's hard to catch them all. Oh, absolutely! There, there's so many. It's crazy. It's hard to keep up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, if someone's new to to your music, is there a song you think that would be the perfect introduction for them, or do you think just listen to the EP from front to back and and you'll get a story of who you are? Oh man, <clears throat> I think it's hard to say because um, I think to get a real sense, you have to listen to things I've written. And um, I think my first, I guess, success or milestone success was my first song out on on country radio. Um, and this was back in, oh my gosh, <laughs> 2019, I think. Um, so it's been a while and um, it's the song Strong. That one really kind of A- put me on the map and made me realize, oh, there's success is possible, I guess. And it, th- those happen in little steps. And it, and it's, it's a song that's close to me as in it's real. It's something that um, I wrote after coming out of a situation and it makes the most sense to me. And so listening to that, then the rest kind of makes sense, if <laughs> that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as on the EP, um, oh my word. All of it, all of it kind of comes together 
to make me if that makes sense okay <laughs> i can't say that one song is gonna tell you everything about me but all of them together write a little bit of a story and all of these experiences make a life really that's what it is mm -hmm. no i like that are, are you someone who would rather hear a single from someone on a regular basis or do you do you like to hear a whole album or a whole ep and and absorb that that whole piece of content all at once uh, I think I love singles, but I, I think it's curious how when, when an artist comes out with an EP or, or an album or anything like that, I think it's interesting to see why and how, how they put those songs, like the order of the songs. I'm like, what's the reasoning behind the order for me? I think <laughs> maybe coming, coming as an artist, that's the things that I, I wonder about. Um, but I think I enjoy more the fact that all of these songs tell a story and it's not just one song and all of them kind of tell one big story. I think that's yeah. the best part. I would imagine putting together, like when you, when you were putting together yours, you mm -hmm. probably had to, okay, what's going to come first. And then how is yeah. it going to play off of this? Like mm -hmm. that might, that on its own is its own project really. Yeah. And I, I, I was actually not sure the list, how to put them, how to order those songs for a little minute. And, um, I, I figured it was just going to come to me at some point <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, it did actually because my graphic designer for the uh, cover art came up with this really fun tagline and I was like there it is there's the order of my songs I love it like it's <laughs> I'm not even going to question it this is great so um, it did just come to me like that it was interesting it's nice it's nice when things are a little bit smooth like that I guess instead, <laughs> yeah. of, instead of giving yeah. a headache about it exactly I agree is there for you personally, is there like a, an idea? I hit this mark and, and I've made it. Like, what's your I made it moment? Oh, my word. I feel like the more you go, the more. The more you have those I made it moments. And so moments that say three years ago, I was like, that's it. I made it like now I'm like, no, <laughs> you did not. But you thought so. And that's great for you for past me. <laughs> but, you know, and so I think. I think lately in the last, oh my goodness, in the last two years, my I made it moment has been just being in Nashville, okay. just being around people and networking and, and, and making more connections um, through one person and then another and then another. And I'm like, I feel like I'm making it slowly, if that makes sense. So it's hard to say what my next big thing will be. I think I've got, I've got objectives. I've got things I I would want to happen um, as far as the EP goes. And so it's, it's important to stay realistic with, with how everything unravels and all of that. And so um, that's important to keep in mind. So yeah, it's definitely putting a song out on radio, making it, you know, to Sirius XM, all those little things are little wins to the end goal. If that makes sense. No, that definitely does make sense for sure. Now, I always want to know is what do you hope someone takes away from your music? Um, I think that we're all human. It's probably, you know, people make mistakes and um, realities is we're all living the same life. We may not, we have different experiences. We come out differently from, from those experiences and we grow at different rates, but we're all human at the end of the day. Um, so I think that's the most important to keep in mind and <clears throat> that my music is me and it, it's a reflection of how I feel about people, places and things around me. And so it's, it's just, it's just a little window into me as a person. And so, yeah, I think, I think if people can, can relate to some of it, then it makes them feel heard as well. Mm-hmm. No, that's that's a great way to put it, and and I'm a fan of your music now. Once I got introduced to it, I've got I've got at least one of your songs on my playlist currently. So it's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it's for sure. And I'm I'm hoping I'll get to catch you live one of these days. But I don't get I don't get out of Ottawa that that much. Too busy doing so many other things. Yeah, so. that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> that's uh, I mean, that's pretty much all I have written down. Is there any last kind of tidbits of? knowledge you want to spread to the world or anything you think we should know before before we sign off 
Uh, there's a lot of cool things coming along. Um, I have a whole schedule of great things that I'm going to be releasing along in the over the summer, really. And so the EP comes out June 23rd, and um, there is going to be some some fun things that I'm I'm honestly it's just it's the excitement that's been been building up in the last two years. Um, it's just it's so exciting to be able to release this finally and just be like, oh my goodness, I did it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so my I did it moment will be when the release comes out. <laughs> There you go. So. That's yeah. That's your your next I did it moment for sure. Yeah. Uh huh. So where can everybody find you on social media and things like that? Uh, I am on Instagram, very active on there. Um, TikTok, I tr- it's difficult to to keep up with, but TikTok is interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and so I I do my best. Um, but yeah, and um, I have a website. You can check that one out. It's justineblanchett.com. And um, yeah, I'd have to say Instagram or Facebook, whichever one you like. I am the most active on those. Okay, we'll make sure to to link your website and everything in the description. And it was great getting to actually, you know, meet you in person now and have a conversation. And I'm hoping we'll get to do this again at some point. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And feel free to send things over if you want me to share it across my platforms. And I'm definitely open to do that for sure. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, we'll sign off here. I won't keep you because it's still a nice day out and there's lots of things to do. And um, enjoy the day and we'll stay in touch. Thank you. You too. All right. Have a good one. All right. Bye-bye.